it's therapy it can be therapy it's a continual journey of discovery or self-discovery that's the thing i love i love about it is that it, it, it never it never stops it's not like i'm i'm just doing this to get to that point you know it's a constant inquiry Welcome to the Blind Fruit Bowl, a platform dedicated to discussion and inspirational art in the creative process. I'm your host, Aaron S. And this is the second part of a two-part episode. This week's episode is part two of my conversation with artist John Hayward Waddington. If you haven't heard the first part yet, please listen to last week's episode as this part is a direct continuation. Thank you very much. Creating work that is more abstract than realistic, John's art is reminiscent of fading dreams, misremembered memories. So I want to talk a bit about your creative process. Mm. And kind of like, what is your creative process? And are there any particular routines that you have that help you focus on your work? Yeah, I developed a process or a routine, you know, that, that I find helps. Usually it start, it begins with photography um, and drawing. And that's kind of, I guess, primary research, you know. I do use uh, photographs a lot for my sort of source material, my references, because they're they're quick. They're, you know, you've got your you've got a camera constantly on you, haven't of you? Course. Most of the time. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so uh, you know, if I go around seeing uh, uh, something just catches my eye, I think, ah, oh, I could see that. And again, it goes back to that that sort of thinking about it in cinematic terms. Thinking, uh, you know, if this was if this was a film, or, you know, I, I could see that being a, a, a still from a from a film. What's going on there? What's the story there? And that that was, you know, for example, I did I keep taking more photographs of this particular area in Deptford, which is I, I think I may maybe I mentioned it last the time. Pink mirror, yeah. The the the, the yeah. pink walls, yeah. And um, I so I've done about three or four scenes from that so far, and two of them I'm kind of still working on. Uh, but I, I, it seemed to go down well. This one I did, which I showed at the art the other art fair called Waiting, and it's just this figure. Um, sort of isolated against this pink background and he's just you know self sort of preoccupied and reading a book I think and um, and I, I didn't I wanted to leave it open-ended as to what I meant what meant by waiting I mean mm. um, and what, he, what, what he's waiting for that you know what kind of emotional impact that might have and so forth anyway so I'm getting into different territory now because I'm talking about what I'm trying to say rather than what, how I what I do but um but anyway, yeah, it was just the, the, the fact that I, that I, uh, you know, that came to, that was sort of uh, photographs. So I used the photographs yeah. thing, and, and then I, w- I might go and, and sort of edit that, you know, in or, or tweak it uh, in in Photoshop or something. Just, just, to, just to sort of change the composition if I need, if I think it needs to be changed or I want, you know, I want to sort of remove certain objects or elements from the photograph. Yeah. Um, and heighten the color, maybe. But I largely, I don't really play around with hue or saturation or anything. In the, in, in, I, I kind of like the photograph to be as it as it is most of the time. It's just the natural colors that you photograph it with, and and um, okay, not always. It just depends, really. But um, and then yeah, then I'll then I'll go and sort of make you know make draw, drawings or ske- sketches of it and, and work it to you know do it do a work on paper in acrylics or something or pastels just to just to sort of get get familiar with it and then and then i will usually i like to prime my own uh, and, and stretch my own canvases um so that that that's sort of another part of a routine it's sort of something or a ritual you know just something that makes me feel like i'm more invested in the work it's not i don't always do that because it depends on time on time but um but i do sort of there's something quite comforting about because you you know the hard, <laughs> the bit that I find hard, I love it, and I, you know, I, I sort of love it, but I, 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 all, I always find it. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, lots of other artists find the same thing. It's like I, I, I need to kind of, the bit I kind of fear is the actual making the, make, the painting of the <laughs> making the painting, yeah. because I don't want to fuck <laughs> it up. It's like I'm kind of constantly. No, procrastinating procrastinating I need, I need to kind of work up to it i enjoy it once i get into it but it's always like this business of of like oh you know just get over yourself just just mix up the palette and start painting uh, because once i start painting then i'm in it I'm, I'm i'm in i'm in it you know um and i sort of forget time you know it's just yeah and hours go by but it's just delaying that sometimes i i, I delay the point I, I find i need a certain degree of pressure i do need i think i thrive on deadlines and and uh, i you know i kind of but uh preferably ones that aren't too too close but, <laughs> yeah. um, 
Yeah, so there's that. I think that that thing of like prepping the canvas, stretching the canvas, is all part of a kind of ritual thing because you know what you're doing with that. You know, you can't. Yeah. There's, there's, you, it's it's a kind of craft. There's a A B C D E. You know, one yeah. two three. Four. There's a way to do it. There's a way to do it. Like, and, it, and it's exactly, and, it, and it's done. And then you've, you've gone through a physical process of, of making this thing. And it's quite satisfying to, hmm. to have done that. And then you can start painting. Well, that's what, I, that's what I find. And then, and then I put music on. I put, I have, I usually use, I have, I have music on my uh, AirPods or radio, but I think AirPods having, having, you know, earphones in, um, I, 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 it just varies. That varies. I think music, I really do often need music not um and and often you know earphones because if it's the right music can really help drive my energy it sort of gets me in the right frame of mind and yeah do you think like listening to a sanitized music will determine the sanitized imagery you create like do you think it has an impact i think it does i think it does i mean i wouldn't yeah i think um and it yeah and sometimes i i, I can't like i find i work better if i don't have any music it's a no no just just, it's complete silence because I really need to concentrate. And if there's any any music, it just interferes with my thinking. Yeah. Um, but then sometimes there's it's just it depends on the intensity. And I think it does, like you were saying, I think it does have a have a bearing on on the on the uh, on the work that I produce. Um, and so I, I, I when I was like I'm I'm in the middle of of, of uh, pre- preparing lots of work for the other. I'm doing another of course, the yes. other. Art. Yes, and other shows as well. So there's there's a lot, a lot of um, deadlines kind of approaching. So I think I'm going to be probably do all all nighters and you know and, yeah. and that. That's, I do find that that's another thing that in terms of routine. I do find not always, but I do find sometimes just being at the studio when hardly anyone else is there overnight um, mm. or, or very, on the very very early hours um, because it's kind of. I can't really just explain why, but it just it, there's something about being in the studio, say at two or three in the morning, which is you know yeah <laughs> that sounds yeah. that yeah. sounds good though because it's like you're clearly passionate about what you do and you clearly like yeah. what you do enough to be able to do that yeah. yeah 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 I have to kind of get myself into the right I, I don't do it every day really because I don't because I <laughs> I'd hope not yeah <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah I'd, I'd struggle with that but you know it it, it, it there's there's a there's a, a really there's something about being there you know say uh, 10, 10, in, 10 in the evening 9 or 10 in the evening and then knowing that you've got the whole night stretching ahead of you so that by 7 in the morning whatever it is 8 in the morning you would have produced all this work and then the whole day is stretching ahead of you so psychologically there's something about that yeah. and I don't I, I, and I did this I did this one I, like, I did this um last time uh, just before the, the, the few weeks before the, the other art fair and i had all this work to do and i, and I said you know i said I, I i said to my girlfriend that i was i'm just going to go off to the studio <laughs> and it was sort of se- seven at night no, so it was seven in the evening and i uh, so i'd probably back, be back about you know midnight and then um i didn't get back till seven in the morning <laughs> so that's insane <laughs> but i i was i was playing but i really um I I I I I really uh, I, I don't know what it was. I was just in such a I had such a lot, a lot of energy, energy. Um, and I'd been up crazy hours the night before that. And but it, it was something about the intensity. Of, so I was working on several paintings at the same time. Mm. So I, I I kind of and I ha- and I played going back to, back to the music. I was playing this Miles Davis um, uh, album. And I I I'd heard a bit of Miles Davis before, but I didn't know him that well. But I I, I knew I knew kind of blue. Um, but I, 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 I had this other album called Bitches Brew, and that was brilliant. It was like it was such a kind of uh, um, sort of it was in musical terms what I was doing. You know, it, 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 it was it was it was just very energetic. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know how you would describe it. Kind of, I don't know if you know that that record. But I don't. It's really, um, sort of. Um, exciting you know i don't know if it's not it's that you wouldn't call it acid jazz i, I, I don't know what, what, how you would describe it but it's, it's jazz just really kind of um funky and and uh, uh and you know not there's no um it's it's instrumental not really i don't of think there's, there's, there's lyrics I think I, I think I prefer tend to prefer non-lyric music i mean i love, I love lyric music as well but um 
for the purposes of actually painting personally i think i prefer just instrumental stuff because if i if i'm thinking about the lyrics then that kind of interferes with i don't know what, I don't yeah. know what it is i think i find you know what i mean it's, yeah yeah it's because you're focused and you want to focus on the one thing in front of you and yeah. it, it, no matter what you're doing your brain yeah. can't multitask so if you're listening yeah, to music yeah. and you're driving say you're not going to be doing what you're doing yeah. one or the other because yeah. your mind wanders back to the lyrics back to the song back to you driving back to the song or back yeah. to you painting back to the song yeah. you're not song, fully yeah. embedded in one place yeah exactly exactly yeah that's true and then so i just um so that yeah so i just just i mean that i think in terms of routine and uh process i mean that is you know i i, I tend to, i've discovered that that if not working all, all night <laughs> long i think uh getting into the studio early does is, is a preferable way for for working for me it doesn't it doesn't always happen that way and you know um or, you know sometimes I don't, i'm just there all through the day you know but um and, and that's fine but i just find in terms of energy levels there's, there's something about the I think morning is definitely better for me. Afternoon, I don't like the afternoon in terms of in terms of you know. I'm I'm sure I read that. I think didn't Francis Bacon? I'm sure I, I read that he had his really kind of. I'm not in any way comparing, <laughs> but it's just. But he he said, um, and I don't I don't drink like Francis Bacon drinks either. Oh, yeah. but, uh, I hope to, not. Yeah. No, I don't. Know. <laughs> Apparently, he used to have this routine where he would get, I think he would get up really, really early in the, in, in the, in the morning, like a sort of, he would go to the studio about two, two or three in the morning, if I got this right. And then just work paint until midday. And then he would just go, go off into Soho and, and drink and, and, and socialize. And, and, and then, you know, uh, that, that, that's how he lived. And he'd, he'd be able to kind of go out and drink lots of bottles of wine somehow, like a functioning alcoholic. And then, and then, <laughs> And then go back to his studio and then paint, you know, from like two in the morning. I don't know how how he survived. I think um, it's actually quite important, though, as an artist to establish kind of like, actually, like, are you a morning person? Are you an afternoon yeah. person? Are you an evening yeah. person? Like, when are you most productive? Because then like, you do have to kind of yeah tailor your life around when you're actually going to be creative and productive. Absolutely. Because otherwise, you know, you're going to run into problems. I think it is something that you yeah, know, people yeah. need to do need to really figure out their own routines and figure out what works for them. Yeah. Exactly. No, de definitely. I mean, I, I think, yeah, I, I, I think I'm more of a night owl early morning than I am, you know, just in terms of making art. art I think is, um, but um, what what about you? Do you do you are you do you find that? Uh, so I work early morning. Yeah, my job starts at six in the morning. No, that's early. Yeah, yeah. but but I do find myself at like nine, ten o'clock at night, being like, oh, I want to make something. I want to create something. I want to, you know, do something. So, so do you, your your job starts at six, and then what? You finish yeah. at. Uh... So my job starts at six. It's just an everyday retail job. So it starts at six, finish at half one, um, and then some from half one, half one. until whenever yeah. I've got the rest of the day. But it's always at like nine oh, ten yeah. at night when I should right. be asleep. I'm always like, oh, I want to like you know edit an image, or I want to make some music, or I want to you know yeah yeah edit an interview or whatever. Yeah. And it's like then I feel like I feel like I'm a night person with a morning job. I feel like yeah. that's what I am. Because yeah. me and sleep aren't friends. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, I do need sleep. I will. I will. No, we all do. But, but I mean, I do. I do find myself like having um, sort of, sort of not nodding off at odd times. Just, mm. just having like mini siestas. You know, just, just because I yeah. otherwise. I, yes, if, I, if, if, if I, if I just, if I, um, yeah, it's just getting up. I tend to get up really pretty early, actually. Um, and then sometimes really early, like, you know, I mean, to, like today, after we've done this interview, I'm going to have some, something to eat and then I'm going to go to the studio, basically. And I'm, yeah. I think I'm going to be at the studio till, till, uh, yeah, probably till, till sort of five or six in the morning, I think. That's uh, insane. It is, it, it sounds, but it's just really lucky to have a studio where we have 24 seven, you know, we, we're we allowed yeah. to go. And access, yeah, access to it. And, um, so yeah, I know, I know, I know it might sound, but I don't, and it's 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 something I can do. I wouldn't do like every day, but I do every now and then. I yeah, I don't know what it what it is, it's, but there's just something about that that the mind. I find that, the, that my mind is working differently than it does in in the morning or when you're because I guess we're supposed to be we're supposed to be daylight creatures and and, yeah. we, and, and 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 we're you know that's when society when when people are out and about and when you're sort of. In a, in a, you know around at the, in the in the in the small hours 
I don't know, somehow the, the mind works in a, in a different way, or the, or, the, or you have you have your your thoughts are more lucid or something. I don't. I I find that the it can help on the other hand sometimes it could be absolutely like what the hell am i doing it <laughs> but, <laughs> no. bed, you know. but, um, talking yeah. about studio actually Sorry? um so it's kind of interesting because a lot of artists that i speak to talk about the idea of like creating work in isolation because they say like you know they might be in the studio and they're by themselves mm. more than often than not they're by mm. themselves creating work like mm. is like the idea of creating isolation or like feeling lonely what's your creating something you encounter the loneliness question i'm really glad that you you asked about that because it it, 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 it is a that that could be a problem and it was a problem I, I i definitely used to struggle with that feeling of isolation and being sort of on my own and much more so before when i was at my previous studio when i when i was at Thameside studios um i was sharing a studio there as well often we weren't um me and my and my friend weren't in the we, we were sometimes we, we we often weren't there at the same time mm. but I, I would again it was 24 7 and so you know sometimes i'd be there late and um but yeah i mean it was quite i don't know what it was i just i just didn't um i, I maybe i was just in a different frame of mind then and um but i really did i did i was struggling to kind of remain motivated and uh yeah. um but my lifestyle was 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 different then. I mean, I I, I smoke. I was a, quite a heavy smoker at that point, um, um, and I was probably you know I, I drank more than I probably should. And, or, you know, I, I was I was just I, was, I wasn't looking after myself as much as I do now. And I think I was trying to navigate my way as a, as as an artist, having just completed a BA, and I had the studio. First time I had a studio, really. You know, I guess that I missed the community, the the, the group from the BA, yeah. and those regular kind of uh, group crits and things we we had. And and although you know there was a community of people at the at at Thameside Studios, we often didn't see you know other than my friend, I didn't really know anyone else there because you know often people would sort of just keep themselves to themselves um, in their yeah they would disappear into their into their little room of their studio and you wouldn't see them. Um, and the, 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 other than if you went to sort of a, the, the arts cafe and stuff, it was like I, I like I really like Thameside Studios, and I, I think I, towards the end, the last couple of years I was there, I, I had a better time there. Really, I, I was trying to get get a grip on um, a grip on things, and and um, and I, but I definitely had that thing of then of being, you know, I go to the studio, and I I, I was you know working on a commission or something, or I was, I was, I was trying to trying to produce work and i and i just had a, a huge periods of of uh lack of self-belief or you know just yeah because that there's like the environment in which you work and you create work is extremely important just as important the work itself you know you have to have yeah. an environment that caters to to the work you want to produce you can't yeah. always you know some people are very high energy people they need a lot of people around they can produce yeah them. yeah some people yeah. can't some people can only produce in like complete silence and it, it's that like you have to also find that out as well especially if yeah. you're especially with other people you kind of have to figure that out in terms of like where are you on that sliding scale yeah i mean i i definitely need uh, yeah because i think i'm i'm quite a social person but i i need um i also need you know i i, I need that balance of, of solitude sometimes and to, you know i i so at time for introspection and quiet but i need to know that i can then go and discuss it but now i'm i thankfully i don't really find that i get lonely so much i'm um you know i'm in a different place in my life or mm. you know but but also just i'm in a different studio and i mean i'm in a you know i feel i find, I find that there's a um i'm also sharing this 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 studio which is good but I, since i've been there i've you know met a lot of other artists and who have studios there at the second floor studios and and, and second floor studios and arts um and uh yeah so i've met a lot of the others other, other people there and you know they're, they're a very friendly friendly uh crowd there and and it's it's great you know so you, you don't, i don't really feel even if i'm on my own in the studio as i will be probably to, uh -huh. it's like <laughs> yeah tonight um then i don't feel you know because you can be alone can't you and yeah. not feel lonely so and then you can be in a crowded room and feel lonely you know exactly yeah and exactly so i think it's just so much of it of, of, of making what you know i think it's really crucial to have a community of fellow artists that you can 
friends who who are doing this in the same boat as you doing the same kind of thing that you can you can discuss your work with and sort of a, like a network which which i'm fortunate you know to have i think from from city and guilds of you know kept in touch with a lot of friends from from there and so we'll try and go and see their their shows if they're in shows and, and they've come to see things i've been in and yeah we're just we, we've kept in touch and that's nice and then i just just people i've met other artists i've met at the studio i feel like i could um I need, need to do this more, really. But if I needed to have a sort of a little crit or a, a, a talk about, you know, get some feedback, I could ask someone, and that's really important. Anyway, and sh- sharing the studios, I do. I feel like I could ask my studio partner for for, for feedback. But um, I probably should should try and organise a sort of, you know, in in the studios, we should try and set set up a kind of um, a weekly thing you know where we where we can go around to have a studio visit or something and, yeah and that'd be so cool i think it'd be really because it'd be beneficial because yeah do you want to talk to other artists about your work or other people who are in the art world because they will have a yeah. a more of a an analytical and more of a considered approach to your work because i feel like you're yeah. asking the general public is great but like they're not yeah. gonna ask you the questions that are going to challenge you necessarily mm. They're not going to make you think about things very differently. Like other artists will, people who are in the art world will, people who appreciate and understand yeah. and also maybe not understand your work well as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, no, no. And, and, and I think so. It's very, it's very valuable to have to be able to, to get you know re- really good critical feedback um, uh, and constructive criticism. And also in the in the real world, like when you're standing in front of the work as well. Yeah, absolutely. because you know, as we said earlier, like looking at an image in the flesh, quote unquote, in the flesh yeah. versus online is so different. And yeah. your reaction to it is going it to be is. completely different. You know? It is. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so true. That's so, that's so true. Yeah. Oh, the, the, the other thing I would I, I, I would mention, just, just talking about um, that period when I was kind of, after I'd, I'd left, yeah. I'd done the, done the BA and I, I was in the Thameside studio. One thing that was really good, and it's, this is this kind of, uh, shout out to the, e, I, I don't know if you've heard of the e, um, ESOP, uh, the essential mm-hmm. school of painting, so they're like a, 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 a an alternative in um, independent art school. I know an, a, another kind of uh, school art, art school that's that's very popular now is um, the Terps Banana, isn't it? The Terps Oh, I know Terps the Banana. Yeah, yeah, and, and lot, lots of people I know of are, are doing courses with the Terp, Terps Banana. You know, because they, yeah. they they run all kinds of things. But Aesop um, have ha, ha their own. Program. I call them ESOP. It's easier than <laughs> Essential School of Painting. But yeah, but they, um, Alison Harper, um, and uh, yeah, she, she's a sort of creative director, uh, really great, um, inspiring uh, teacher and tutor. Um, but they they run lots of like one day courses and classes. So you in various things that you know that that are suitable for any for for, for an artist of any level at any level really um so you know that was very that was helpful during that time that really really a lot, uh, gave me a lot of support and mentoring um during that time when i was kind of navigating trying to nav- navigate my way um uh so that I'd, I'd go to these one day classes and um uh we, we had some great really good good tutors and really good feedback there you know so, so that kind of kept kept me kept me sane you know so that was really good um um but yeah, there's some r- amazing tutors like Dan Coombs and uh, uh, Leanna Lang, um, and uh, we we had David Mack was was you know the sculptor David David Mack taught taught there. Um, I'm gonna say yeah. it's a good it's a good consideration or a good point to raise about like community and making sure you've got a a community around you that is gonna be you know supportive and responsive mm-hmm. and is able to really kind of like foster the vision you have for your work because I feel like yeah, yeah. a lot of the times well, I mean a lot of the artists that I speak to especially they might either be starting out or they may either be kind of very new to the art world or they may you know just be wanting to starting to exhibit their work and they kind of need that that guidance but not in a sense of like to tell you what to do but they need kind of like the mentor or somebody to mm-hmm. ask for guidance or somebody just to kind of give them a bit of a direction because I feel like as I've said previously, like being an artist is such an uncertain and unstable career. I feel mm. like every single person who creates art, and no, no matter what capacity, whether you're quote unquote professional, whether you do it full time, I think everybody mm. has something to offer. 
everybody has value and everybody has oh, yeah, you know yeah. words of wisdom. And I feel like just asking people, you know, you'll be surprised how many people are willing to give you knowledge and give you their time if you just ask them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, I agree. Yeah. If if you just you just have you just have to ask them. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's always not easy because I feel like sometimes it can be very intimidating approaching artists. I feel like particularly if you don't do it or if you don't know people, if you don't know them. Um yeah. I think it can be like, yeah, it, even for me, even though I'm in a position where it's kind of what I love doing. Because you, you, you love, because you, I mean, you, 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 I mean, that, that's great that you've, you, you, you know, you've, you've, your natural curiosity to find out about, it and, and, and it, but, it, but it must be fascinating to sort of, you know. You, it's very interesting. It's very interesting for me because it's not something that I would have imagined I would be doing, say, about four years ago, just because the person I was then is very different to how I am now. And it's like, I never would have thought I'd be sending like voice notes to, to literally strangers on the internet, just ask them yeah. about their work, whereas where, where they do that now and it's cool and it works out well and, and people are responsive, you know, yeah. uh, which well, is great. Like the, the more you've done it, the more you've, the more confident you've become. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So now it's like, it's, it's very easy for me to, to email somebody or to message somebody and say, look, I really love your work, let's talk about it. And also it's yeah. like, it's nice to be able to give somebody the time to talk about their work because you don't always, as you said earlier, like you haven't done it before, like people don't always get that. Yeah. Um, and for me, I just think it's important because as I said, like everybody has something to say and it's like, okay, so what do yeah, you have to say? Like what, what kind of words of wisdom do you not realize you have that you can impart on the next person? Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I just say like, I'm very curious about art and why people want to create art. So, so I wanted to ask you about color in your work because I'm very, very fascinated by your use of color. I like, I like colors that pop and I like, you know, I like um, to create kind of quite dynamic use of color. Uh, I also like the sort of high high contrast chiaroscuro kind of drama that you can achieve with the, the sort of high tonal contrast of, of um, and it doesn't it, it could be you know it could be just charcoal and just having a big range and, and a, a dynamic range. Are there any particular mm. colours you like to use? Well, I love so many colours. <laughs> <laughs> I love them all. No, um, yeah, I mean, I do. I do have like favourites. I think I do. I love Prussian blue. Quite a lot of earth, the earthy colours. I love the um, um, raw raw umber um, and um, burnt umber. Burnt sienna is great. I like crimson al- alizarin. I, I think that's how you pronounce it. Crimson alizarin. Quite difficult to say. Yeah, that one is it's quite a rich, opulent kind of um, red version of red, of red, of red, and it, and it but um, mixed with Prussian blue and. Burnt umber get a very nice kind of rich darks, you know, um, rich earthy darks. Um, but yeah, raw and burnt umber I use I use a lot, and then I like lemon lemon yellow, uh, Naples yellow. I also like cerulean cerulean blue and primary cyan blues. Cerulean blue is there's a kind of almost turquoise kind of color hue to that. Do you know what I mean? It's a very light blue. Well, it's, it's got a particular kind of luminance which i really i, I love um and i love i love yeah i love pink i, I really like pink as a color i think it's such a because the, 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 i like very intense pink but i like i like like the, there's just a yeah i basically what i'm saying is i love, <laughs> love lots like of everything different... <laughs> so, but pink's an interesting uh-huh. choice because you don't find pink in nature that often no 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 exactly it's an artificial so, yeah so yeah. by putting that into your work you're also making your work in some way artificial yeah. which yeah. is nice because it kind of comes back to the idea of like reality and the idea of like yeah. making like the sky bluer than blue or making the grass yeah. greener than green you know, yeah. kind of changing the colors to change the kind of mood of the and, 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 to, and, and to change like yeah how the viewer kind of interacts with it or their response yeah it's like yeah, yeah. you like you heighten you heighten the sense of um reality or hyper reality yeah. you heighten the sense of Construction. The imagery you're, yeah, the imagery you're creating. Well, it draws attention to the fact that it's constructed because it's, yeah, you know, if you put, I mean, I, I, I like sort of an underpainting of in, in it, usually in the, in acrylics, tend to be, you know, use one of those quite sort of bright, almost on, you know, like unnatural, like pink or bright green, you know, sort of unnatural yeah. green, a, a sharp green, and then paint over that. I then paint in oils, um, and I, I, I'll kind of, yeah, I'll sort of loosely draw out what i'm going to be painting and then paint over with oils and and um but then allow that some of that that bait that under that underlying color that kind of base color to kind of pierce through and that yeah. kind of draws the eye it, 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 but it's it's uh so, so there's kind of choices in where i let that show through and yeah. how and what that says what that's doing to the to the overall 
composition you know because it can if, it, if it's like too much if it's if you allow too much through then it's just it can un completely ru ruin it or but if you just yeah so so so, so that's interesting because I, I do love I, I think you know just a tiny tiny amount of of, of really sharp color can really make or break a, a, a painting sometimes you know it can it can, or it can make it can make all the difference anyway mm. I, yeah, because you can choose what to direct the viewer's eye to, or or what exactly. you want to highlight, or what you want to exactly. um, what you want to like kind of recede in the background, or kind of be in the forefront. It's like all these decisions yeah. are something you're making on the yeah. press of creating work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so so it's I, I love yeah I love it. it's endlessly kind of fascinating to me that what, what you can how you can play with it, and so it's it's it's, 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 it's constantly it's a constant kind of process of constant like uh, you know um, experimentation, you know. Yeah. Um, different color combinations and um and also i love um i love yellow ochre and um i remember this is another you know um bringing up my my art teacher my mm. all cre credit to my art teacher at school mr smith who um i think he, he, he yeah he introduced us to this this uh there was a painting by 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 Degas, by edgar edgar Degas. it was a it was a a woman seated at, but at a window i can't remember the name of the painting but it was we were, I think, I think it was for GCSE actually, um, and uh, our project was to sort of do make a copy of this painting, try to try and make our version of this painting, and starting with a kind of yellow ochre base, and then working back into it. And yellow ochre, um, that can be ex really extremely um, exciting, you know, just just as a as a mid tone to start a painting. You know, from that, you can, and I like, I, I remember just doing that that uh, painting of my version of Degas painting and it was you know just the woman seated at a, at a window all this light pouring through but starting with this yellow with this, with this yellow ochre and working back into it with with sort of uh, white spirit solvent solvent of some kind to sort of take that lighten up the the, the, the yellow ochre and it, it created a lot of lovely kind of subtle variations in, in light um and i really yeah so i still i still do do use that a lot as well really like that yeah no, but actually i know work with a yellow base like that's typically what yeah. i'd work with um and every time i say it, i'm always like how does that work but, yeah. um, that's really really interesting because i didn't realize that you could use like different views and stuff that's really cool actually that's really interesting i somehow feel like i need to learn more about like the actual process of the painting that'd be really interesting to really? learn more about yeah. i think yeah because yeah. i think it would give me a different well it would give me like a different appreciation because you know it's, yeah. it's all well looking at a painting and be like this is you know a really great painting because it looks cool but it's yeah. like do you really understand what it's taken to get this get to that achieve that yeah thing. to make this the way yeah. it is in front of yeah. you and i feel like we don't we don't really get that idea even if even just like a you know and um, one 30 second reel of somebody painting you don't yeah. understand the process of, of that or you don't spend, you don't understand the that. work that of that yeah there's a lot of um yeah because a lot of it i find is um mixing up the mixing up the palette you know mixing the palette yeah. the... oh 100 percent because that's the skill by itself you have to know color theory you have to know what's going to work and what's not going to work you have to be able to make the same color again as well that's also the thing that i always find strange and people are, when people are painting like skin tones i'm like how do people get the same tone again well there's so i mean that's the thing with skin tones there's such a variety of i mean mm. I, I love i love you know um figurative painting because there's such a I mean, such a variety of uh, sort of subtle subtle nuances of and uh, you know uh in in uh, of skin tones and skin color just just you know yeah. uh, i mean you know purples and, and and reds and you know yellow just so many different things that you that you can and and so i yeah i i enjoy that um but it's um yeah there's a lot there's so much there are there any colors that you don't like to use or that you want to use more of Oh, I, I, I wrote down, <laughs> I jotted down um, Payne's Grey. I don't, know. I don't really like Payne's Grey, I don't think. I just find it too, like, I, I really like making, mixing up. I love greys. I really like mm -hmm. greys. Because I think greys are just, you can infinitely, because it's supposed to be a drab, you think, well, it's a drab colour, but it's not, because there's so many different, it can be. but it, Yeah, but, people do, but I actually really like grey. I'm a huge fan of grey. I think greys oh, yeah. are understated. I feel like yeah. people don't give them an appreciation. Yeah, I've, there's lots of interesting greys behind yeah. your... You, behind you now you know yeah uh, and um so yeah there's 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 like you know blue the, the blue grays and the pink grays the warm and the yeah. cool grays and um and i i agree that people don't give them enough enough credit um and um because it, 
they they do you know when you put them side by side beside a, a really kind of popping bright color that they really come they, they can really come into their own i think you know yeah. just um anyway but but i uh yeah i think pain's gray because it's already mixed up as a gray and I, I prefer mixing up hmm. and it's quite a sort of i don't know i just find it a very muddy you know i just don't i just don't like it i, I prefer mixing up my own grays really um rather than out of, out of a tube um there's none that I, I really don't like, you know, other, other than that. Would you ever consider creating an image, like a painting, or even a series of paintings that are just, like, monochromatic, like, black and white greys? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that I like, um, what, just working with, with, with a very limited palette. Yeah, like a, yeah. so, like, black, grey, white, that's palette. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, and I, I did, like, a, when I was on the, on the BA, I did a, a series of, um, I got back into, the, into charcoal, drawings and stuff and, I, and and um i was kind of yeah got so excited about making um these these big kind of quite dramatic paintings of the sea uh bathers at, bathers at the sea um um and that was just you know that sort of got me because i've been, been painting a, you know using all the colors and stuff but then just using that very limited black and white sort of monochromatic color scheme that sort of self-imposed restriction it is, was quite liberating. It was quite sort of, you know, the fewer options, fewer choices you have, yeah. you can uh, produce some really in interesting stuff with that, and so and so interesting work with that. And so, yeah, and I would like to to do, uh, uh, you know, do a series of paintings that are based around a very limited palette, mm. like the yellow ochres and stuff like that. And because I think with with less options, you you can be you can be quite creative you know yeah yeah you have to kind of like problem solve how you yeah. get to a certain color where like say, maybe yeah. you don't have it on your palette it's like how do you get to them yeah you know? exactly. there should be like some kind of like painting challenge yeah how do you make making <laughs> exactly yeah i also like that thing, the thing of working back into it into a painting with you know like like i do when i sometimes when, I, when i'm i've been doing quite a bit of life drawing recently and i'm uh, doing um you, you know obviously the, there's the time pressure with that so you're you're Plus. you're you know, um, but I, I I like using the, the the rubber as a kind of so it's it's a it's a it's a subtractive thing obviously, but you're 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 you're, you're drawing with the rubber so you're t by taking out you know so you, you're, it's a subtractive yeah. process um, and covering a paper in 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 or the surface of whatever you're using in charcoal or you know one color and then working back into it cutting cutting out creating a form by cutting out that's really simple it's a, there's a simplicity about that. That's really appealing, actually. Yeah, that's um, interesting, actually. That's yeah. kind of, it's almost like an aversive way of working. Almost like a sculpture, I guess, in terms of like, you know, yeah, like a block of stone. Yeah, yeah. yeah block of stone chiseling away. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and so I found, yeah, I found that, well, just, just just going back to working with charcoal just, just reminded me of, you know, how that, that's it, you know, that not everyone would would necessarily like to working with, with, with charcoal, but for me, it's something, it's a, it's a medium I do enjoy. And then that's it, you know, that tells me that I, that uh in terms of painting you know um that i well i know that mo mostly it's kind of a, an uh an additive thing but um also working back into it with like a a, a cloth with with some solvent you know so you so you, you find a lot in what you take away as well as much as you, yeah. as you do yeah yeah actually um, i've always been intrigued by artists that actually do that who create i think have quite a lot in my mind currently i'll send you some links to people i think you might find interesting but yeah no, please do yeah, yeah like a lot of artists who do that who paint who like they'll paint like a really nice realistic portrait yeah. and then they just start destroying that portrait by like yeah. you know by reducing you know by uh putting solvent on it or Ooh, by painting over move. the top of it or like kind of because it becomes about the mark making and it becomes about yeah, the mark, mark the um end product versus you know a real a quite quite nice image it becomes the additional stuff you put on top of it or like the additional no it comes about mark making and the process of the work as opposed to the final, as work, opposed itself. To the final work itself exactly the, the, the sort of finished portrait in the yeah, you know that's what i meant to say yeah yeah no i mean I, well that's that, so that was something I, I was exploring with um you know um some work i was so, so some some paintings that uh when i was at city and gills there were there was a couple of paintings that i was trying to i couldn't quite get it 
I, I, yeah, I think it was. I couldn't quite achieve what I wanted to with with them, but I, but I, I went through it. Went through so many. Um, went through a lot of a lot of process, um, uh, a long process of adding and taking away and adding and cutting, cutting you know, cutting back. And I think I learned quite a, a bit di- di- doing it. And I had a group tutorial where where we kind of discussed that. And 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 and, and it was an example of a. Of a piece where I was kind of I, w- I was showing a work that I that I, I felt didn't really work but it was interesting to talk about that because uh you know it was, we were kind of analyzing why it didn't work and and so that was helpful actually but um yeah I mean it it, it was frustrating that because it was like you know I mean that's the case of where I probably should have just just dropped it and, and moved on to something else you know rather than kind of try and, it, it, know, try and fit Try and figure it out, but uh, but I mean, yes, you know, it taught me something anyway. It, it, yeah, but I say that's where you learn. You know, you learn yeah. by failing and, and understanding yeah. where you went wrong. That's how you're yeah. going to learn to do the next, create the next piece of work. And and actually, like, how often did you show like your failed images or like things that just didn't work out? Yeah, sometimes I do put them on on online, and then you know, I do, I have put them um, because I do think that the process is is, is interesting to me, hmm. even if the the painting I'm or the artwork is not something I. Think is my best work i i think the showing the process or showing and and i think you know the do- documentation of it of it or showing the working out is is interesting um but then i have put work on that i thought oh at the time i thought that that was that was good and then i realized subsequently realized that, that i've changed my mind about it and i don't i don't and i wish i hadn't <laughs> i wish i had like put it on or something you know but um and i i definitely will would be very happy to show to friends or to if people came around for a studio visit more than happy to show work i didn't that i i didn't feel was working or that i that i felt was um yeah that that, that, that wasn't successful and because then because then you know i'd like to hear what other people thought about it and 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 if get their feedback on it because that's really valuable i think to know what other people think and if, if it sort of chimes with what you with what you think about your own work and 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 if you have kind of misgivings about something, why is that? Is that what other people are feeling about it? And, you know, and, hmm. um, yeah, because yeah, because I guess it does sometimes. You know, often it is sub- subjective, isn't it? But of course, um, yeah. A question I want to ask you that I feel like a lot of artists struggle to answer, which is like, how do you know when your work is finished? That's the sixty-four million dollar question, or that, that's the classic one, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't like to sort of overwork images or paintings it's definitely not always easy to know when it when it is finished i mean now may, maybe i'm i hope i'm getting be- better at this now i mean the more you do it i think but yeah sometimes it is hard to know when they're finished because you you're it's so de- what you think of as as finished is dependent on the state of mind that you're in at the time mm-hmm. and what you're because you're you're evolving or your your thoughts and feelings and moods are changing you could just it can be mercurial and so you could be have a different a different view of it sort of in, in a week's time but i think generally speaking i have a fairly good gut feeling and then i think you know that it's not quite finished but it needs something it needs something i can't always figure out what it is it needs um and but i always i'm very very kind of wary of if i'm tired working on something and ruining what i have you know because i'm tired and then i'm just like oh, i know i, know, I yeah. just you know, be careful of that um but um so what i try and do is just put paintings to one side i often put paintings to one side often often for sort of weeks um sometimes weeks or even months you know uh knowing that they're just sitting there waiting you know i mean i've got this, this one painting that i've i've, I've had uh, which i'm going to work on t- today um tonight um which i've, I've had sort of in a it's half finished but it's been kind of sitting there. And I can't wait to get to just finish it off. Um, and it's a it's it, it, it's a reworking of one of the MA paintings. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's another version of one of the MA paintings that I did. Your Cafe Field. So I, I feel like uh, you know I just just want to really do it. I, just want to, I feel ready to sort of fit, finish it off. But I feel like some days I I'll sort of have the painting in front of me. If I'm too close to it, if, if I've been working on it for, for 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 a while, sort of it's like a puzzle that I can't figure out how to. I know it might need something, but I, but I don't know how to do it. So the best thing is to put it to one side and then give it a, a week or two. When it, when you come back to it, I find that you 
you you're 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 clearer headed about it and you can you can figure it out or usually that it, it it's i yeah i somehow finish it off and, it, and then in a way it's quite it's quite satisfying to you know just come back to something that, that you got stuck with and then uh, that and then often i've like worked I've, I've had paintings that i've just completely that haven't worked and then i've completely re reworked them and completely that yeah. they've become new paintings you know and that's really satisfying as well i've done that several times just completely uh painted over old paintings you know paintings that just, just were dead um and yeah that that was kind of satisfying because i hate that feeling where you where you're kind of uh feel like you know as, as i was we, was we were talking about earlier you know where you're where you where you're uh you just feel like you're treading water or you're just not getting any and it's just like oh <laughs> yeah like you need space in the work you need to kind yeah. of you know yeah. put it aside not think about it for a while focus on something yeah. else and then when you come back to it you'll see it from a different perspective because with, obviously with a perspective, exactly yeah exactly. because then it's like and then you'll you'll you know you'll take a look and you'll be like okay okay this is what needs to change because yeah. as you said you know you're so close up to it you're working on it constantly it's kind of mm -hmm. like you're it's kind of you're blindsided by it it's like mm. taking a step back and being like oh okay actually you know what this is what it needs you've got a different perspective yeah. you're like okay cool i understand now because you know yeah. and it's, it's why you need other people's opinions because like you're it's very dear to you yeah i think that sometimes can be a hindrance because you know you want it to be perfect but it will never be perfect yeah yes it will never be i mean you know and, and your idea of what per perfect is i mean that's the thing you know it is a, a constant process of inquiry and you're just all you know the reason that you, you you finish one work and hopefully it kind of achieves what you wanted to and if and if, and if people kind of respond to it positive, favorably and positively and 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 they and they you know speaks to them um that's really that's lovely you know that's great that's a, that's a lovely feeling then you feel like you have made a connection you know you've, you've communicated something and 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 it might not be you know i mean what is perfect you know but i mean there's always that that's what that goes back to this idea of, of repetition um or yeah. you know doing that not re repetition is not uh the enemy of creativity it's it's, it's anything but i think you know because you can find something new in it um the second time around the third time around the fourth time around and it also becomes like second nature as well like you don't have to even yeah. think about it you know like yeah. stuff like mixing colors or knowing how to get to a certain shade or knowing what you need to add yeah. or take away like it becomes second nature which makes your process yeah, faster and easier it definitely does and it's just like that you know i think that's, that's how our brains work you know to, 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 rein, to reinforce neural networks you know um the, the, the more you do that's, that's what they say isn't it you know there's, there's this theory that the, the practice makes perfect basically the more you right. the more you reinforce something the, 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 the you develop a kind of shorthand for it you know and so um i think it was the art there's, there's that artist um mirandi i think it's an italian artist called mirandi who's i don't know if do you know do you know his work i think so a beautiful Italian artist who who sort of did does well, I suppose that you you'd say he did his his speciality was kind of his subject while still lives you know uh, and that has it that that has a very very particular kind of occupies a very particular kind of space and I guess what we think you know we don't necessarily elevate that that particular subject matter um, or genre I mean I I love his paintings I, but you know I think maybe if you say I do still lives, then there's a perception of that being uh, that so you, you might you might categorize that as a particular yeah. thing. But people like Cezanne, you would say, did work from with with with, with still lives, but he brought something else to it, you know. Yeah. And similarly, Mirandi brought something else. He, he he managed to kind of he wasn't just doing a bowl of fruit, you know. It was a it was a uh, but I mean, basically, what I'm saying is that is that he would do the same kind of subject over and over and over again. But and they're exquisite paintings, in my view, anyway. But um, yeah, so so it's just um, yeah. So I guess I guess that's that's that, that's an example of that. You know. Yes, I feel like if you're if you're like repeating yourself and you're painting the same subject over and over again, I feel like mm -hmm. you you kind of get to the point of like discovering that that subject and understanding yeah, that yeah. subject from all different aspects not just the physicality or like realistic aspect or like the because yeah. um, you know everything is symbolism you know everything, colors is you know colors have meanings and you know Absolutely, yeah. so i feel like you kind of delve into whatever topic you're looking at by repeatedly yeah. painting about it for instance or create work about it and you kind of yeah. get to understand what it is that you're actually as we said earlier like what you're yeah. trying to say through that medium yeah. of expressing this particular image 
exactly and it's like it, the, the, the very process of doing it shows you what mm. you're trying to get to you know yeah. it's like that you're learning as you're as you're doing that as you're i mean that's a wonderful thing actually I, that that uh and that's why i think you know i i, I do like like i find it because once i start painting i do find it very hard to like i i do i i, I don't like to I, I i i like to have hours and hours ahead of me because i yeah. know i completely lose time doing yeah. it which, uh, yeah, yeah you want to be interrupted yeah you, you, you constantly stand back and look at it no i could do that or i could do that and it's 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 finding patterns you know and 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 yeah. and that's the thing for me. There, there was a really good podcast. It's called Art to Life. I don't know if you've heard it. If you've heard it, I've um, heard of it. Yeah. Nick, Nicholas Wilton and um, but um, talking about he, he was talking about that how how you know uh, one of the problems is is people uh, you know artists are confronted with this is sustaining their their energy and you know and thinking oh they shouldn't even if they just do like one hour a day that's not enough they need to be there all day long or something you know but then he was saying you know even if you it's about consistency. So even if you just just did half an hour, that's still better than doing not not doing half. Of course, half an hour. absolutely. And stuff, you know, yeah. Why has creating art taught you about yourself? That's a really really good question. Um, it's taught me about how how I work and sort of how I work best, if that makes sense. I guess it's a very self reflective process um, uh, when, when you're making a piece of a piece of art um, and. And because it's a kind of ongoing process, and you're constantly kind of questioning yourself, and it's a, you know it's a, it's, a, it's a constant sort of process of interrogation. Um, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? Uh, is it any good? And so you're constantly sort of testing yourself. Uh, and I think it's hopefully taught taught me once I'm I'm committed to a, a work of art, I do persevere. Uh, mm. So there is a sort of, there is a, a determination to want to keep going, a sort of a perfectionist, you know, or a drive. Not I'm not saying that is that the work is perfect at all, but there's a, a restlessness within me to keep wanting to get it right or get it better mm. next time, you know. So so I do see it as a, as a you know as, 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 as an ongoing process, and and uh, and and I I think uh, you know um, it, it shows it has shown me over the course of the at the time that I've been making art um, and you know various doing the doing the uh, as a student uh, when I was doing the MA um, it's yeah it's shown me that that my that my practice constantly evolves and that my ideas evolve um, and that I shouldn't sort of get despondent or or too upset if if a piece of work doesn't doesn't work you know if, if a painting isn't working um, and that I should that I should sort of um, be trying not to be too precious i think well yeah i think i think um not and not getting stuck into something that isn't working sort of li listening to myself listening to my sort of to my to my instinct and so if something feels like it's, it's like an up, uphill struggle um and you're pushing against something that really isn't your own because i think it does show you it, it, it's a reflection of your own character you know you're, you're trying to put put you on so you're trying to sort of express yourself um, and your your ideas and your temperament and your sensibilities and your your you know all of that on on the canvas or or in a three D form depending on what form art form you're working within. Um, so I think it um, yeah I think I think you know there 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 are those those times when I've been sort of making something and, it, and it's just it just feels like it's a grind and you know. Um, rather than kind of try to press through with it then try to then um just be bold and uh scratch it start again you know and yeah. and then and uh and you know um th there's something lovely about charcoal and covering a, p a piece of paper if you can't think of anything else to you know just just cover a cover a page with charcoal and and uh draw um and uh and and that can that can uh, sort of uh, reveal some answers. Um, I think um, you know it's, it's it's about finding your own your own path, you know, um, yeah. and, and 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 the clothes that you feel comfortable in, you yeah. know, the the, the the sort of skin that you feel comfortable in, and uh, and you're you're trying on different things, and then and some things just won't feel right, so just ditch them.
and, and, and until you fight, until you feel like you're wearing the right kind of clothes. <laughs> and uh, and I think that's the sort of a way of one way of putting it. Um, I've also it's in a sort of more trivial sense in terms of it's taught me when I work best. I think that's what I was trying to say earlier that that yeah. uh, I certainly those I did I mentioned about working all all nighters and and I, I've yeah. done a few of them that's absolutely insane and it and and that's very much doesn't doesn't help at all really. Yeah, I think it's, it it can be quite sort of it can, it can lead to some quite um, there are some interesting things that can happen in the course of a 24 hour, you know, of like a, a whole night long session when you're kind of up at three in the morning, but that can't, you can't sustain that for, for you know, so it, it, it's, 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 uh, but I think my, my best hours of working, I, I, I definitely need sleep, but, but if I can get up at like four or five in the morning, then I work really well. If I'm up at like three or four and I'm energized, um, that yeah. well, about four or five till, 12 1 or maybe even 2 p.m that is that's great because then because then i feel like i've done i've, I've done a i've i've uh, sort of been being up with the with the lark you know that is, yeah. a, is a good thing so in, in that in, in, in a sense sort of uh, doing it doing it doing it a lot has shown me when i when i work best which is important but also the act of creating art has taught me um um what kind of you know more about about myself or you know um what sort of person i am because, because as we said you know uh, it, it is a bit of a sort of self self reflective activity yeah. and um, uh, and and it kind of it's like things swim to the surface um the the ideas the concerns the things that that drive you the things that you care about the uh the kind of person the kind of uh, temperament that you you, you know you the, the, the sort of the kind of person you are temperamentally uh and that that can all sort of manifest itself in the way that you apply the the, the, the paints you know or uh, um or uh, I, you know i've probably said before that i've quite that i i'm quite a sort of physical um painter which does that make sense? You know what I mean. Yeah. But, but yeah. By, by physical, I mean I enjoy the physicality of and the action of painting. So the the brush strokes and the materiality of the paint, all of that, I want to sort of show that on the canvas. Yeah, um, that's so, part of the work itself. Part of the work itself, and, it, and so in that in that, that sense, it is a sort of self portrait. You know, because yeah. I want that to be sort of visible, and I want the I want the viewer to kind of feel that and to to, to experience that um, themselves, um, or you know, get a sense of it, um, and um so yeah i think you know creating art it does teach you things about yourself it teaches, teaches you the sort of person that you are because i think ultimately it is it is about trying to find the person that you are because yes. you know when you're uh, you know good art i think does come from springs from a, a, a sort of honest place you know the, you, an authentic place so I have a question from the last person I've interviewed, but it's actually changed mm. since I guess sent you your notes. So the last person I interviewed was a really cool artist called Nazir Young, um, who creates these really, really cool cityscape paintings. His question for you is, if you could create the ideal space to present yourself and your work in, what would that look like? It would look like, look futuristic. <laughs> it would look, uh, no, it would look, um, it would look, um, I, I do, I do think that, 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 um, uh, that's a that's a question I'd like to sort of think about anyway, and, and go away and think about. Um, but I I think um I I I would like I mean I think um I do I do think um clean white the the, the convention of the clean white walls gallery space I, I I like the the white cube I think is a wonderful gallery and I think um I guess uh, an I an ideal for me would be to have a kind of very minimalist um. I mean, this might change, you know, but I think um, I, I, I I like a sort of quite a minimalist space that's with 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 white clean walls and where you can where where, where the object can kind of whether it's a sculpture or a painting or whatever it is can just be, be surrounded by a quiet space, but and 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 allowed to just be to sort of allow to 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 allow the viewer to kind of to to just take it all in and to and. Uh, you know, um, I suppose that 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 kind of that minimalist thing that you know wanting it to be the white walls and you know that natural light 
um, kind of, it, 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 there's a sort of, I suppose there's some approximation of a religious setting, you know, or, you know, hmm. but, you know, for, for not, not for exactly for the experience to be religious, but, um, but for it to be just, just, just a quiet space to, to, to enjoy the work in. So yeah, I think, you know, to allow you to reflect upon what you're looking at. Yeah, to, to, exactly. It, yeah. To, to allow you to kind of reflect. Yeah, a, a, a reflective space, and and um, um, just to be able to, to to sort of contemplate the work. And um, yeah, so I think I think um, yeah, that's the sort of thing I would like. I mean, I, I, I but then he, but then I, I say that, and I think equally, you know, having had work in cafes and things. I love work. I love seeing work in in, in different environments, and and uh, you know um, to see it. So I mean, actually, I've just just I've just had this um, just been in this uh, show, which is really really good, um, really what uh, really uh, wonderfully curated by um, Dr. Albert uh, Godetsky, um, uh, and uh, who's uh, um, I know from the. City and Gills, um, and his, his partner was was at the was um, Simon Sai Beja from Be Beja was uh, on my in my year at the um, yeah. on the MA, and um, so but yeah he he's he's a uh, created it brilliantly and um, and it's uh, um this, but that's that's it was, the, the show is called Seven Artists at Seven Stratton and it was it was it was, a, it was a Mayfair show I don't know if I mentioned it to you before. No. It's still on. It's it's um it was it was you know really really thrilled to be invited to, to be involved in it. Um and it's just yeah me me and six other artists um all uh you know who all have in common that we went to the that we did our MA oh, wow. at um at C City and Gills um a fine art fine, fine art MA at City and Gills um and so so that's nice to to have done it with some pals and um to to be in the show with some pals and um. And it's a, but it's a, it's a really nice old sort of Georgian building. It's not, it's not exactly a gallery. It's, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a sort of Georgian townhouse in Mayfair, um, and on Stratton, Stratton Street, hence the name Seven mm. Artists, Seven Stratton, um, and, and the building is occupied by that. The, there's a law firm there and then a, fi a financial advisory firm, um, and they often, uh, apparently, a lot of their clients are sort of art, art collectors and things, and. So that's um, so yeah that that, that show, the shows on so I think it's it's continuing um, still September so um, yeah really really nice to see but but the, I, but my point was it was just that that was a not a kind of gallery setting yeah but it's, it's a different environment a different environment but but you but you see the work in uh, you know in 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 a kind of domestic almost like a domestic setting and that and that really changes the way that you look at the work and it and it was, it was really interesting to see. How it was, how he, um, Albert curated it, sort of hanging our, uh, hanging, hanging our works next to other, you know. Um, so all of our, our work wasn't all, all our pieces weren't all put together, artist yeah. by artist. They, they were sort of combined and and uh, with 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 other artists, and so you see, yeah, you, you, so you sort of see themes, um, yeah. connections, and. Um, between them yeah so that's, that's really nice so that's cool i think that's a really cool idea uh, yeah. do, do you have a question for the next person i interview i did uh yes oh yes um well my, my my question was what advice would you give to your younger self uh this is for the next art for the next yeah. artist um about becoming an artist yeah that's well, a really cool question right so so which is more important? Okay, wait, let me put a context for this. So I had a conversation with a good friend of mine called Brian Dean House, who I mentioned probably in that episode now. Um, and we were talking about the idea of skill of an artist versus personality of the artist. And, you know, in the society, you kind of need to have a bit of both, but, you know, one's always more important. So the question for you that we kind of arose in the conversation was, which is more important? Is the skill of an artist more important or the personality of an artist more important? I think this, on balance, the skill of an artist, um, uh, what's more important? But then it depends. But I, you know, I, I suppose it depends what you mean by a skill. Um, yeah. and, and obviously, personality is important um, because if if you mean by personality, you know, you, you well, you, you're 
how you present yourself, what your attitude is. I, th I think I think the the artist as person, you know, is a, 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 a sort of yeah. That's almost like an extension of 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 being an artist. Your mm -hmm. personality, you know, it's 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 all of you. It's, it's you. Um, I mean, if you, yes, I, I, what I've having I sort of jotted down some notes, and I thought I I I, I suppose the other thing is to think, you know, what 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 do you mean by if you mean by what what's more important in terms of succeeding as an artist, um, that again de depends on how you define success and what yeah. success means. <laughs> so yeah. because um, if if you mean by success um, becoming uh, famous like Damien Hirst and extremely wealthy mm -hmm. uh, and um, fame and you know famous and fame and wealth and and um, all of that um, and acclaim. Um, then personality is, I would say, personality is very important, you know. And you could, and you, and you can arguably say that there are a lot of a lot of artists whose personality kind of exceeds their necessarily yes, their, right. their, their talent, you know. Uh, and, and there are and there are plenty of, I mean, probably hundreds of thousands of artists who are who are extremely talented, or that, you know, that, that are more talented than than those that are famous, you know, but they yeah. don't, but they don't have their level of success in that in in, in those terms and that yeah. entirely depends on, on, on the definition of success i mean for me and i was talking about this with a with a friend recently and you know we were, we were just saying you know what does success mean and i'm glad i don't think that success equals fame and fortune necessarily it's, it's a difficult one because if that's the only thing that's driving that's that's driving your one's desire to make art then it's like it becomes like an empty adventure or an empty enterprise. You know, you're, you're, if you're simply driven by dollar signs uh, or fame, which is a kind of over, so everyone's famous, and and or you know, every, we still live in a fairly obs a fame obsessed culture, of course. And um, and it's ultimately a kind of very silly thing. That's a very kind of. Uh, it's, it's, I'm not sure it's a very healthy thing to be fa famous anyway, but. Um, I mean, I can, I can understand how that, how, 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 uh, you know, becoming financially very successful, but you know, selling lots of paintings uh, is is in a way that that's successful because it because it kind of it it, it signifies that you're that lots of people want to buy your work. So 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 then that's so then that that's a um, that means that you're that, that you are succeeding in making work that people want to buy, um, but whether that necessarily means you've succeeded. On your own terms is another matter, yeah. um, and if, if the two if the two c c come together and you and you 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 know if if if, if you have succeeded if you if you've been um, sort of kept your integrity and and uh, you know not sort of sold yourself out to make work that you don't really believe in simply to make money, then um, but it's still you're still you know you're you're, you're still able to. Um, you're still, you're still connecting with a huge audience. You want to buy your work, and that's great. But um, I, th I think you know it's 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 a, it's a it's a difficult one. That whole question of what success is, and and mm. you know I, I think I think it's a dangerous. It's 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 a bit. It's, I'm wary of of because um, I just wouldn't want to make, be making work I didn't really believe in simply because yeah. something that I made happened to do very very well um, and. Then I was, you know, a gallery, you know, contacted me and wanted to represent me, and um, I had, you know, represent, you know, an agent, and it was all we want you to uh, keep doing this, and then you're locked into doing something you don't really, you don't really necessarily believe in, and and then that that would that, that would feel um, stifling, which is the opposite of what of what I think for me, um, being an artist is 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 all about, you know, um, yeah. I mean, you have to, you, I guess you have to, you know because um otherwise you 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 can't develop um and um so i uh, sorry i've just I've, I've kind of wandered off on that, on that no no, that, on that. no that's perfect because you kind of blended those two questions together so that's absolutely perfect it works out really well so yeah I, but for me like the skill of an artist is 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 very important i think i think it is important you know because i think um that underpins what you what what you make and uh you know it, it used to be fashionable to kind of i mean it goes in and out of fashion what how we how how the art world or or uh, you know how in what regard 
the art world holds skill and mm. and, 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 and and considers considers it to, uh, something to be either scoffed at or 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 sort of you know sneered at so what they're doing, doing life they're doing life drawing you know they're, they're bothering to you know to care about the the draftsmanship or you know um and 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 there definitely was a period where that where it wasn't um where where it was out of fashion to be to, to skills were kind of not it wasn't wasn't important it was it was about the, the concept it was about the you know the idea that was the was more important and in, in that sense like i think that's where personality personality was 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 more important because it was about how you presented yourself and how you presented your idea um and uh the substance of the work and i'm not necessarily saying that that you know because all because uh, art's interest the, 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 this whole endless question of what art means and what and, and what we what the value that we assign to it is endlessly kind of interesting because you you know, I mean, if you go back to that Michael Craig Martin, um, wasn't there a very famous thing he did in the in the, in the seventies? I think it was something about um, this work of work that he did, um, where he placed a glass of water on a. Do, do you remember this? Do, do, no. do, do you remember anything about this? He he famously, I think it was in the seventies, um, and this is where I'm a bit I'm a bit hazy. Um, yeah. But it was it was called. Let me just quickly just check this so I can yeah, get the name. So it was called an oak tree, right? Okay. And it's by by Sir Michael Craig Martin. So in this, the artist claims that the, so that so what, what it, 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 he called it an oak tree, but what he did was he placed a glass of water um, in a gallery, and he and he said that's an oak tree, and and of course this is, so it's a, it, that's an example of I guess conceptual art. And he he did an interview with himself in which he, um, or yeah, so he says. Placed a glass of water is placed on a small glass shelf of the type normally found in a bathroom, which is attached to the wall above head height. Um, and he, he composed a series of questions and answers to accompany the, the objects. In these, the artist claims that the glass of water has been transformed. The questions into an prove the obvious impossibility of the artist's assertion with such apparently valid complaints as, "Haven't you simply called this glass of water an oak tree?" <laughs> and, and 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 but the oak tree only exists in the mind. The answers maintain conviction while conceding that the actual oak tree is physically present, but in the form of the glass of water, just as it is imperceptible, it is also inconceivable. So, you know, um, that I, I find that kind of thing. I, 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 I love I love the, the idea of that, the way that it plays with our it's, it's a very simple. Um, but it, that's a different kind of a different kind of art, you know, to, yeah. to and stuff. But that that's. Um, I love, I, I, yeah. That's, um, but I suppose that's that's that would be for me to, to ex exemplify a, a, a trend where because it, that's not, you know, the um, that that was that's just one form of the, one type of work that Michael Craig Martin was, you know, made, um, and um, he. It, it kind of it, it just exemplified how um, you know that's playful, that's that's conceptual, um, but I think there was a there was a trend for a lot of that kind of work, a lot of that a lot, a lot of that kind of conceptual work, and so skills based, you know, um, traditional skills based uh, um, techniques, uh, you know, that was that was. Where, you know, we we learn to draw with a plumb line and um, and, you, and and observational drawing and those those sort of what which which I think are 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 really um, really sort of valuable and fundamental and and they, and and whether or not you you want to do you want to be a conceptual artist or not I think um, whatever whatever you want to make I think it's so it w it would be a crying shame if that if that just went out you know. Mm -hmm. um, um, because I think all those kind of and, and it has I think it's come back you know that's um I think uh, there is a there's, there is more of an emphasis on the on on the on on the value of those of uh of um, craft you know craftsmanship and and uh, um techniques and le learning techniques and and um uh, and drawing drawing such a sort of fundamental thing um but um so I think all of those things are. I think that's it really is important. It's like the kind of groundwork um, 
it's the kind of it's, it's the basis. I mean, I I think you know I, w- I wish I, you know I'd I'd like to be I'd like to I, 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 I I'm constantly wanting to develop my skills. I just want to you know I I I, I feel like I, I just I feel like when I do life drawing, I'm I'm learning a lot, you know, and and it's and it, and and I'm I'm training my eye, and that's kind of like it's almost like learning this practicing scales, you know. If you were if you're a musician, yes. then sort of so I, I regard it as that is very important because I, I think um it or it, it fee it's it's like it, it's like the sort of groundwork you're you're enriching your vocabulary, your 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 resources that you can draw on, and whether or not you your work is you know meticulously um skillfully wrought drawings or or is conceptual work um or whatever form it takes i think having that kind of um grounding in skills is 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 sort of uh, inv- invaluable yeah yeah i agree with you though though i think it's actually really important to just to how to do things other yeah. than just paint really well i feel like yeah. it's important because that would as you said it would really inform your work and it's like if you yeah have the ability to make quick rough sketches or the ability to use different medium or have the ability to learn something new. You don't yeah. know what's gonna how it's gonna inform your work and how it's gonna add to your skill set. For you know yeah. some you know a project in the future maybe or if you're collaborating with another artist and they want you to use a different medium or you know it's just like it will help you challenge yourself more than it would do if you're just doing the same thing constantly. Exactly, uh, exactly. In my opinion. Yeah exactly and if and if you like learn if you if you're open to sort of learning new skills or you know um, like I want to learn more about um well, I want to. I want to do, sort of bring sculpture into my. Oh, yeah. I, I'd I'd love to see how that kind of informed. You know, working with 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 clay and working with three D, uh, whether it's clay or or, or or other materials, but just just seeing how that then informs my my paintings or what, mm. you know my, my that like my two D work and um, uh, I, I think I think yeah my my the way I paint is quite you know it's quite sort of textured and layered and stuff so i think that that, that could um yeah i think i think uh in terms of enjoying the physicality of the material i think that's not something that, that I, I would uh, enjoy with sculpture um i mean i have worked with sculpture uh, you know to, um to some degree before but not but um, yeah i'd like to do it more, more consistently and um so yeah, yeah it's what open yeah. to open to more skills yeah yeah, that's, that seems like a good natural progression, I think. That's quite nice. I like that. I'm looking forward to seeing that happen, actually. It's going to be interesting to see yeah. how you do that. Because it's a challenge to figure out how you're going to make it happen that works for you, that makes sense to you as an artist, and then also makes sense to the viewer. Uh, yeah. That's nice. It's a, good, that's a challenge. But I think that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. Well, I, I like the idea of presenting, you know, both. If if I were to have a show, because I'm, I'm, no, I'm hoping to organise a, put on a show with a, with a friend, um, uh, well, it might be like a, a, a small group show. Um, yeah. Might be like early next year. Um, so, yes, I, just, I, 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 I have this idea that I'd like to to sort of show some paintings, but in relation to some three D work as well. Some yeah. some and see how they kind of how they work together. That's a great yeah. idea. Definitely, yeah. let me know if it goes ahead because I'd love to come and have a look. Oh, I'll, I'll come and yeah. Don't don't you worry. I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll keep you posted. Definitely. Yeah. So. Can anybody be an artist? Um, can anyone be an artist? Um, I think if if they um, if they want to enough, then yes, um, that was my view on it. I think um, that um, I think it's um, uh, can anyone be an artist? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, I th- I think clearly some some people are. Are more born to it than others. I mean, some people just have a sort of, you know, um, uh, a, a natural um, gift for it, or natural um, uh, facility for 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 um, you know for making imagery for 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 uh, have a have a keen visual eye, um, and I think it's also about sort of artistic. Your kind of sensibility and your your artistic consciousness, um, you know the way that you look at the world, um, and, and um, so that's sort of to do with your your sensibility. So I think it's not partly it's it can be taught, so that you know if you want to learn how to do how to make a painting or how to mix paints and how you know um, 
there's a certain amount of, of, of techniques and what we were just talking about really but you know um but um you know i'm not sure that that simply being good at at um knowing how you know knowing how to use techniques or 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 you know or um being being having a certain degree of skill uh necessarily means that you that, that you're that you're uh you know you're you're an artist i think i think um you know it's it's to do with i think it's a lot of it is to do with with how you see the world and and um and then and um there's a i mean yeah i don't know i think i think i think it's if they if if someone wants to be to be an artist um then then that will then then they can you know and it's and it's and they can acquire the skills um but not yeah i don't i don't think everyone has that inclination you know hmm. um uh and and then and then the other the other thing of course is money and opportunity you know so i do think that that, yeah. that, that there are a lot of people which i think is an important to say because i think you know that there are a lot of people who probably do really want to who are which which is sad if that's the case but you know who 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 do really want to be artists um or who have had that kind of fire when they were younger and a hunger to want to to sort of make to be creative and to make you know that they, 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 they they've had but they haven't had the opportunity or they haven't had the the education or they haven't had the you know, they, they haven't been able to afford it. Um, yeah. And and um, and then one for, for one reason or another, because of circumstance and because of, because, you know, I don't know about now, but um, it certainly wasn't such a, it wasn't a subject that was exactly given these, the, the same um, status um, mm. okay. or credibility or well, not credibility, but, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't sort of, it, it wasn't, it was always seen as a bit of a, you know, what you're an artist <laughs> yeah, of when, course. when i was yeah. when i was a girl, when i were a lad um and so i don't know about now maybe it's different but i i think um it's um it's i think a, a lot of, a lot a lot a lot of the time people could be put off doing it because you know someone an adult or a teacher might say well you know not encourage might discourage them or might say you know um, it's, oh, i wouldn't do that because it's there's no future in that you know you know, I don't know what, what you want to do that for. You know, and, and and you know, very few people can be can make a living a, as an artist. They, they might be told that. You know, maybe very people will, you you can't. And so all of those things are. Um, so it, it, it can be quite a hard thing to kind of to to be to to um, to follow as a as a as a as a as a you know as a kind of vocation or as a, as a you know, to, to to pursue as a as a living. I think to have the confidence to in yourself and to believe in your in your abilities, it can be a difficult thing to to do. Um, so I don't think that every everyone, you know, I think I think there are a lot more people who could be artists, but but they they might have had that path. Um, you know, there, there might have been. Um, uh, What's the word I want to dis dis discourage from it or de deterred from pursuing it um, for one reason or another? Um, and I, I think you know. I think we did we did just talk about this uh, in, in another uh, earlier on about how you know it's, it's a crying shame that there's, that there's not more more um, not you know the art the arts are not valued yeah, more highly. Of course, yeah. um, and, and and if more money was put aside to to fund them and to encourage you know mm. children to do it and to to uh, because i think it's a, it's a great thing I, I i you know i think if if you do discover yourself as we were just talking about earlier through art I, or you, it can it, it can help you understand yourself better and i i saw a quote by someone called nicholas wilton who's a, who's a guy that who, who, whose podcast I, I i listen to from time to time um art to life it's called um, and I saw he, he posted something on, on Instagram saying how creativity sets you free. And I thought that was a really nice thing. You know, creativity can set you free. It's a way to being free in the mind, at least, you know, even if you're not free in other ways, you can, it, 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 it is a, 
it's, it's, it's an exciting thing to kind of open yourself up to to make art and 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 to do it sort of for your, for your day-to-day life in your day-to-day life you know so um that's a long that's a long answer to that question but yeah so what makes a good piece of art um what makes a good piece of art um if it's got the color blue in it no <laughs> i mean you're not wrong there <laughs> yeah that's good um uh, well like you know if it holds you if it holds me if it compels me for 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 more than compels my attention if i have to kind of just just stop and take it all in and and, uh, and, and I've, I've, I've done that with um you know many times with paintings and, and, and not, not just paintings but yeah it just if it, if it if it's if it compels your attention um and you just want to contemplate it i mean in terms of how you how you could explaining why that why that's it why some why a piece of art is a good piece of art that's an interesting question because you know it's it's it, it because what you're then doing is kind of verbalizing something that is a is a, is a, is, a, is, a, is an experience is a sort of is a, is a is a physical you know is a is a is a is a visual medium um and trying to trying to kind of put into words what that what it is that's doing it's doing to you um which is it can be useful to do but i, I mean it's quite difficult to to explain necessarily um you know um i could you know could say um could be any number of reasons um the, the use of color the, the 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 you know the 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 um the uh subtlety the tone the uh, the scale the palette the the way the the light plays across the surface mm-hmm. yeah it could be any number of sort of you know it could be purely about the aesthetic um reasons or it could be about the message that the that the, uh, the, the if you feel that there's a message that's been con- conveyed to you it could be about the the, the, comp- the composition uh the way that the painting has been constructed um uh it could be about the sort of draftsmanship and the you know the, the, the sort of degree of uh very similar similitude or you know yeah. life like or whatever um yeah any number of different different reasons that you think that you that you could could um adduce for it being a good good piece, piece of work so what was the last piece of work that captivated you or that held your attention initially i i wrote because i've i've been to the because uh, when i initially got the questions i, I think mm. I, I the, the work i made i made recently seen it i've been to the, P, the peter doig show oh, yeah. um the court old and i really i love P, peter doig and uh, so i i i uh I, there were some paintings there that, of his that i really um struck me were really um you know that I, that I, that I loved there was one called the Alp, alpinist um uh which uh is yeah it was like a, a skier with these huge kind of, it's quite a big painting um it was an oil painting and it was um but a skier with these with the, where the kind of ski sticks were pointing have you have you seen them you know i one? haven't know but i can check it out but yeah and, and i think it was a, maybe it was like two years ago maybe it was, it was made fairly recently anyway um but the skier is wearing a harlequin kind of Oh. Uh, soup and it's quite a, it's just um it's got the the yeah that 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 really um did something for me um re- you know resonated it was um you know i i i that was a landscape figurative painting um and um yeah, that one. But then I, I, I liked a lot, a lot, of, a lot of the others that I saw in there as well. Um, and then the other one was um, so in that one, it was the the the, the composition, the, 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 the just the, the really the, the the ski sticks are kind of doing it, you know, and the Harlequin outfit are doing a lot of um, work compositionally, and and uh, it's just a it's just a you know very compelling image, um, and um, then. Um, and also the scale of it is, is pretty big. Um, but then I, I also saw because I, I went to the I went to Amsterdam, Amsterdam not that long ago. I think yeah, I remember I talked about it. And um, 
we went to see the we went to the Rikes Museum and we saw we didn't manage to see the Vermeer ex exhibition because there had been a Vermeer show um, oh. and I, I, I'm sorry to have missed that but um, but apparently it was so it was sell out you know it was absolute yeah I imagine so you know but um, um, but we did see several but they they had a few. Vermeers there, um, and some, one or two that were, had been in, in, in the show because it had recently finished. Um, and there was, I, so I saw some that I hadn't seen before. And uh, I mean, I, I, they had the, you know, the, the, uh, the old favorites, <laughs> like they had the, um, the woman with the, 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 uh, the, the milkmaid, that, that one was absolutely love. Um, uh, but that's just stunning. And it, and it's, it was surprised me how, the, how, um, the scale because I always thought that it would be it'd be bigger but actually they're, they're pretty small paintings so that how he manages to get that amount of detail and the the, the, the um they they are beautiful um but the, 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 there was one that I hadn't I wasn't, I wasn't so familiar with and it was called um the the lady read lady um lady reading a letter I think it was called a woman reading reading a letter and it was just such a um yeah, exquisite sort of painting that's just just depicted a a, a woman reading a letter um, hmm. through the light of a window, and um, and that was that was really very um, yeah beautiful painting, and it was just again quite a small a small painting, um, but you you know he 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 really managed to sort of distill a moment there, and and. It, and it's a, it, it's just like the artistry is amazing. Just the level of um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, the level of skill um, and um, you know, it's, he 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 gets he gets that he manages to capture that moment. Um, and this was a painting that was probably made about four hundred years ago or yeah. you know, three hundred years ago, um, and you know. Yeah, that that was that was a really be beautiful painting. I thought, um, and what you know, it's it's one that I hadn't, I don't, I wasn't so familiar with. So that's yeah. cool, and also like the environment in which you saw it as well, like in a different country, you know, with a kind of a different experience of going there. Also, probably helped towards the kind of memorability of, of what you saw as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, the, there was there was another one as well that I hadn't, I didn't, I didn't know. I don't think I'd seen it before. It was an extraordinary, amazing painting. That was that was um, it was a it was a, I don't remember the name of it, but it was a, it was a, another another Vermeer painting, but um, it was an exterior, um, and it was, it was just these. I can't remember what the name of it was, but it was um, an exterior, and you, and and you saw through the, these two doorways, these two these two women kind of. Doing everyday activities. One of them was um, was was bending down, washing something, and another one and another one was doing something through through another doorway. And that was, you know, it was it was just a house on a street, a regular house on a street, brick, a brick wall, um, and again a small-ish painting. But, but the, the the detail and the sort of this glim these glimpses of life. So, it, you know. In his in his paintings, obviously, that often the the subjects are kind of, you know, they're 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 not of they're not of the grand nobility. They're of, mm. they're they're from, you know, working class. <clears throat> you know, the milkmaid just pour, just doing everyday activity. But he makes he makes those 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 activities sublime. You know, mm. um, elevates that thing. A woman reading a letter, it's just um, yeah, extraordinary. Sixteen fifties or whatever. Yeah. So, what was your younger self think about your work, and what do you think your work says about you? Thinking about that, I thought that my younger self would like would like my work. I think he'd be maybe he'd be surprised. I mean, I've changed a bit since I was young, <laughs> since I was younger. Um, um, I don't think he'd be that surprised. Um, um, I think. Because I was always quite, I think my, and I don't think you'd be that surprised because I think I was, I was pretty experimental. I was, I was kind of always wanting to, I was, when I was younger, you know, I, I loved the materials when I was younger. 
So I love, you know, you know, getting out the crayons and and uh, all the, the the oil bars and just the feel of the material. So that hasn't really changed. So I don't think you'd be that surprised that I still kind of use oil bars and uh, and um, you know really like the like to uh, apply the paint in quite a physical expressive way. Um, but I, I hope he I hope I hope he'd like I think he'd like the work. Um, and my work, what does my work say about me? It says, my work says about me that I think that I'm, yeah, that I'm a physical, uh, that, that I enjoy the material and that I'm interested in people, that I'm interested in, 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 in people. Um, and well, I think it's, yeah, it says about me that, 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 that I, that I enjoy experimenting with the materials, um, and that I enjoy the process of making the work. And I hope that that's visible and evident in the, in, in the work um and that i'm that I'm, I'm you know that i'm constantly kind of trying to i'm i'm, I'm continually kind of in, in uh, involved in 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 looking and looking again and in and, and, and you know um always trying to um yeah experiment i think and and, and just um but the, there's an enjoyment in that, an enjoyment in in the process of making. That's really cool. So the very last question, uh, dual borough question, which is, which is what are you currently working on, and where can people find more about you and your work? Thank you, Aaron. Well, um, I'm currently working on a, a series of new paintings, small, smaller scale works um, for this Albra show that I'm doing. Um, which is a, which in a few weeks' time. I've, I've I've been making. I've already made a few of them, but they're yeah. I'm just doing doing some more works for that, and they're kind of work in progress. But and so and um uh, and also um I've got several bigger, a lot bigger works. Um by by comparison to these to the small small ones, I'm, they're, they're you know like sort of a hundred by hundred thirty, hundred hundred forty in there, and so I've got two of them, which I'm yeah, it's quite a jump. Yeah, that's they, insane. That's such a big big scale to work on. But I like that. I, I often and often find working on the small ones um, is interesting because it, it kind of you, you can press everything into this smaller mm. frame, um, and then that that often like sort of gives me ideas and 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 informs the larger scale ones. And and you know I can kind of take what I've, I've done in the smaller ones. Um, it's yes, it's 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 not so easy to get away with anything. Not that it, I don't know um, with 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 the smaller ones because you can you know. Everything is the focus is much tighter, I think. But, um, but uh, yeah, it's just a, di a different way of working, really, with with the small ones. Um, I think, um, yeah. So, 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 I'm, and I'm working on the, the, these bigger ones because I want to, I want to get them ready for a, co a competition. You know, there there are various things on on, on the calendar, and also for for shows, um, for for this group show, which I'm hoping to do, um, and. Also, the Albra show coming up um, in sort of late July, and then also um, in in September, I'm going to I'm going to hopefully um, participate in the Deptford X show because I I, I I live in Deptford and there's a, okay. a, a Deptford X um, art festival where you know locals um, Deptford residents can can. Um, uh, Show their work in in uh, you know bars, cafes, and um, public spaces, basically. So so yeah, I'm going to be doing that hopefully as well. So yeah, um, and 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 you can find my work on on my Instagram, um, uh, so, which is art underscore John H W, um, and uh, also so I'm I'm quite frequently upload and um, sort of updating that yeah. and putting new work on um and also you know I, I i tend to use that more than my website oh i should i should be using my website i need to update my update update my website um my, my website is www.mrjohnhw.com so that's so yes you can also find um quite a lot of work on, on my website uh you can also find you know a lot a, a lot of the work goes back it goes back um to, to around 2015 or maybe before that actually right. um so so you can see sort of different a, a range of different work um and um but I, i'm in the process of sort of updating and and um 
uh, making my website over and kind of smart thing yeah. a bit. Um, but yeah, those definitely in, Instagram and the website. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's perfect. John, yeah. thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Aaron. It's been really great to, to have this discussion and uh, just to chat. That concludes the second and final part of my conversation with the artist, John Hayward Wallington. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions or comments about it, please send me an email at theflyingfruitbowl at gmail.com. Get in touch via social media sites such as Twitter and Instagram. The Flying Fruit Bowl podcast can be found on a variety of websites such as Spotify, YouTube and Apple Music. If you like the show, please consider rating, reviewing, sharing or subscribing on any of these platforms to help spread the word. Also, please check out theflyingfruitbowl.co.uk for daily art inspiration and if you're a creative, please get in touch for a chance to be featured or interviewed. The Flying Fruit Bowl and that also has a Patreon page if you're interested in supporting the platform further. Please start from £1 and you'll access rewards such as early releases of episodes, weekly inspiration and previews of upcoming artists for the website. If you're interested in supporting the platform this way, please head on over to patreon.com forward slash the phone group bar. Additionally, if monthly donations are not your thing, we also have a PayPal for one-time donations. Once again, thank you very much for listening to this episode today. Until next time folks, please stay safe.